and there came a day. A day unlike any other. When Earth's mightiest heroes found themselves united against a common threat. To fight the foes no single superhero could withstand. On that day. The Avengers were born. It's been a while. It's been several years, in fact, since they took the sky from me, and we somehow took it back. Making Serenity was, as some of you know, an obsession for me. It was a need, a need to be heard, to exist, not to be snuffed out. Like the show, uh, the movie was very much about the experience of making it. The victory was brief and costly and ended without much fanfare. Except, of course, that it didn't end. A number of people, some of whom are in this very room tonight, um, kept it going, took it to a real cult status. And more importantly, more than a cult, we made it a cause. To date, through these screenings, the Brown Coats have raised over half a million dollars for Equality Now, and a lot of money for other charities as well. I can take credit for exactly none of this, but I can take a minute to tell you what it means and what it means to me. Equality Now is basically fighting for the same sort of thing that the crew of Serenity fights for, the right in this case for women, women in the direst, most poverty-stricken and exploitive circumstances to be heard, to exist, not to be snuffed out. Quality Now is not a particularly well-known organization. They're not flashy, they're not red carpety, they're not ripped from the headlines. Advocacy takes time. It takes years, decades. Decades fighting things like child marriage, sex trafficking, female genital mutilation. Now, I know that at this point you're like, female genital mutilation, it wants more popcorn. I just, just come to the nice movie and genital trafficking, so cold. I am a leaf on, no, that's bad too. Uh, why? So here's why. Next year, Quality Now will celebrate, if that's the word, will clock its 20th year, two decades, of fighting the good fight, fighting the cause. And in case I have been clear, the cause is that one half of the human race is given the same basic equal rights uh, that the other half enjoys. We're not given, given back. That is not a milestone, 20 years, that I intend to go unnoticed. I want to make some noise. I want to make a joyful noise. I want to make too much noise. I want the neighbors to, to complain. I'm tired of being polite about something that matters so much. As Malcolm Reynolds would say, it is my target to have the ill behaviors. I think that's what he says. I don't really know that film. So next year, more, louder, crazier. We want to increase membership. We want to increase awareness. We will be doing everything we can to get people to make that small personal commitment that really does make a difference in what is an actual fight against actual evil. Um, I want to not just be noticed. I want to celebrate. And I want to celebrate you guys and everything you've done, how grateful you've made me as an artist and as a quasi-activist. Um, so we're going to be doing more things. We're going to be having some events. We're going to be having some auctions things we haven't even thought of yet. We may have to have a shindig. We may have to have more than one. I will keep you posted. In the meantime, enjoy the show. Enjoy it more, because you guys have done so much. You have put me to shame if I had the ability to feel shame. Um, you've helped people around the world who will never know you. You've made me very, very grateful, and you've made me remember time and again
Hi, I'm Nathan Fillion. My good friend P.J. Harsma came to me a few years ago. While he was promoting his own book, the Softwire series, he realized that libraries across the country, children's libraries, public libraries, were woefully out of books. We all know it's important that kids learn how to read. But if you teach a child to read and he doesn't have any books to read, what's the sense? We started a little thing called the Kid Need to Read Program. But with the help of hardworking people like yourselves, brown coats like yourselves, we've turned it into a bunch of do-gooders, into an official 501c charity, inspiring imagination for kids all over the... What now? It seems like you keep getting faster. I, I'm just going the same speed. I got, a, I got an odometer here. I'm keeping it the same thing the whole time. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I, mean, you keep, I, it, 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 I just feel like I'm, I'm running out of breath. I can't you, even look, look, we'll do it one speech. more time. One more time. Six times a charm. We'll do it one more time. One more time. Okay. Okay. It just seems so fast. Come on, buddy. Six times a charm. It'll be awesome. Hi, Josh. Thanks for coming out here. So I was in a literature class the other day, and we, we were asked to think of male feminist authors, and you were the first one that came to mind. Uh, my question is, why do you consistently include strong female characters in your writing? But they're awesome! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, um, was it why? Do I write them? Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's, there is a video on YouTube that can help you with this. Surrounded uh, tonight by people um, of extraordinary courage. And I know a thing or two about courage myself because I read a book with some uh, courage in it one time. And uh, it sounds really like a lot of work. Um, so I'll just keep writing. Um, I write. Uh, the most courageous thing that I've ever done is something called a press junket, um, uh, which is actually pretty courageous, believe me, because uh, they ask you the same questions over and over and over and over and over and over. Um, I've done as many as 48 in a day, um, these interviews, and they really, they don't come up with the fresh stuff. So um, there is one question that I've been asked uh, almost every time I've been interviewed. Um, so I thought tonight, uh, briefly, I would share with you one question and a few of my responses, because when you're asked something 500 times, you really start to think about the answer. <laughs> so now I will become a reporter. It's going to be amazing, a transformation. So, Joss, um, I, a reporter, would like to know, uh, why do you always write these strong women characters? I think it's because of my mother. Uh, she really was um, an extraordinary, inspirational, tough, cool, sexy, funny woman. And uh, that's the kind of woman I've always surrounded myself with. It's my friends, uh, particularly my wife, who is not only um, smarter and stronger than I am, but occasionally actually taller, too. <laughs> um, but only sometimes taller. Um, and uh, I think it, it, it all goes back to my mother. So. Why do you write these strong women characters? <laughs> because of my father. <laughs> um, my father and my stepfather had a lot to do with it because they prized wit and resolve in the women they were with above all things. And they were among the rare men who understood that recognizing somebody else's power does not diminish your own. When I created Buffy, I wanted to create a female icon, but I also wanted to be very careful to surround her with men who not only had no problem with the idea of a female leader, but were in fact engaged and even attracted to the idea. Um, that came from uh, my father and stepfather, who, the, the men who created this man, who created those men, if you can follow that. <laughs> so, uh, why do you create these strong, uh, how you say the women, I'm in Europe now. 
So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a very it's international. These, I don't know where, though. Um, these strong women characters, um, well, because these stories um, give people strength, and I've heard it from a number of people, and I've felt it myself, and it's not just women, um, it's men, and I think there is something particular about a female protagonist that allows a man to identify with her that opens up something that he might, uh, an aspect of himself, he might uh, be unable to express, hopes and desires, he might be uncomfortable expressing uh, through a male identification figure. Um, so it really crosses across both, and I think it helps people, you know, in, in that way. So why do you create these strong women characters? Because <laughs> they're hot. <laughs> but these strong women characters, why are you even asking me this? This is like interview number 50 in a row. What, how is it possible that this is even a question? Honestly, seriously, why, are you a, why did you write that down? Why, do you, what, why aren't you asking a hundred other guys why they don't write strong women characters? I believe that what I'm doing should not be remarked upon, let alone honored, and there are other people doing it, but seriously, this question is ridiculous, and you just gotta stop. So, why do you write these strong women characters? Because equality is not a concept. It's not something we should be striving for. It's a necessity. Equality is like gravity. We need it to stand on this earth as men and women. And the misogyny that is in every culture is not a true part of the human condition. It is life out of balance, and that imbalance is sucking something out of the soul of every man and woman who's confronted with it. We need equality. Kind of now. So why do you write these strong female characters? Because you're still asking me that question. Thank you very much for including me tonight. Thank you all. Uh, you should look up quality now anyway. Um.